I want to bring this meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Ballard. Here. Mrs. Zario. Here. Ms. Johnson. Here. Mr. Sturgeon. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's do the first call yeah. of the public. Oh, recognition of visitors, seeing none. Um, first hearing of the public, please. We do have a hearing of the public, please. So you guys know we are going to go into executive session, so it's like speak now. It's not going to be long, but if you get anything to say. Pardon? Okay, very good, very good. Um, approval of the minutes of the last meeting on December the 11th. Motion. Second. Roll call. Mr. Williams. Yes. Ms. Nazario. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Um, any old business? We have no old business. Uh, recommendation of the treasurer. She is out. Nothing from the CEO. No committee reports. So right here, I guess um, we need a roll call to go into executive session to talk about employment and legal. Motion I guess that's, is that a need to suspend the rules? That's no, because we just went through it all. Very good. Motion. So motion to go into executive session for employment and legal litigation. Second. Potential. Roll call. Mr. Williams? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Ms. Rosario? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Going into executive session, there may be a motion when we come out after this discussion. We'll be right back. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Rosario? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. We're out of executive session. Next order of business would be I guess we'd be new business. <coughs> so before, we have anything? before we jump into discussion, um, I would it would not be my motion, but I'd like to read language if someone would like to consider making this their motion and then we'll go forward the rules and have a discussion on that or you all will rather um, the motion would read to authorize legal counsel to investigate and conduct fact finding to address any contracts for employment for the Lorraine City School District entered into or otherwise modified during the 2019 year and to authorize legal counsel to take appropriate action to address any legal or equitable issues as they may relate to contracts for employment which may be discovered so that's the motion on the floor if someone would like to make that a motion that that resolution be Accepted. Second. And then a discussion for the so board. So we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Yes, actually, um, first, thank you for you and Mr. Riley um, taking the initiative to um, to draft that. Um, if I could share kind of some back context. Please. It was brought to our attention um, through our chair. Actually, I think Mr. Riley contacted our chair mm -hmm. um, that he had heard that there was some activity going on around um, altering of contracts um, for certain individuals in the district uh, by Mr. Hardy. Um, and of course, we've had challenges. We, I think we brought to the attention of the ADC and to um, the state superintendent some time back when we heard that there were some um, contracts being altered um, to give people extended stay, especially what we believed was in lieu of the changes coming with House Bill 70. Um, also, um, as it has now been stated in the newspaper, there had been ongoing negotiations for probably four months, I believe, with the CEO um, in terms of terminating that contract with the district and not moving forward under his leadership. And so um, we, were, we were aware, we were concerned that there would be some alteration of contracts, uh, giving people what is so-called um, Parachute. golden parachutes. Yeah. Um, if I leave, then you can do this, 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 and this, and you'll be compensated that, that, and that. 
Um, we didn't know the specifics. I'm not sure if we have the exact specifics in those in some of those, but I think we've been doing some public records requests and not being able to get those. We knew that there were contracts with um, certain administrators. Um, we had heard they were altered, and upon asking for that information, we were not able to receive it. Um, but we have had a lot of other information uh, regarding that. So um, it's kind of unfortunate. It's, um, it's very, I believe, deceitful. Um, I think that the ADC was very um, forward thinking and re resolving that um, through a resolution that the CEO would not enter into any contracts, um, sign any new agreements, alter anything of significance um, without going through the ADC. That's correct. Um, besides the everyday bill paying, and obviously this has happened. So we're thankful to our legal counsel for um, being attentive to it to it because this definitely impacts our district. Um, I think we've been informed that by uh, Dr. Ring or Greg Ring um, that we're looking at potential deficits going forward and things like this um, significantly impact that. We also had spoken with, um, with Mr. Ring and he was very, I believe, incensed by it and had communication with ODE and the commission and the board. So, um, I mean, anybody else have opinions on that? I mean, it's kind of a uh, it's just, it's, it's just really um, ingenuous um, to do things like that on your way out, trying to pad people's contracts. Um. I don't know if it's happened yet, but if you remember when Josh Hill was here, he made a statement that uh, by October that we would be in fiscal watch. And knowing yes. that something like that was coming, uh, I, I think it would be a, a poor move on anyone's part to obligate the district to, to any more debt, you know. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't think it would be a good idea to to start renegotiating contracts or, or doing anything like that at this point. But uh, I, would, I would like to hear uh, Steve's take on, on all this. But. Yeah, the, I mean, the ADC definitely took a stand to not do any type of negotiating, altering of any contracts, and uh, we have never been approached for any type of approval or discussion even on that. So even before yeah, your, even your before motion. there was nothing that was really ever brought to us in regards to any contracts whatsoever. So um, if those things did happen, that would be frowned upon very strongly by the ADC. Well I think several of these several of these contracts that we're speaking about were done maybe maybe just bef just before last last June, maybe in May or something like that. Yeah, would we have been were not right aware. about when House Bill 70, the big talk in Columbus was happening where yeah, it we, might go away. Right. Yeah. So he quickly may have fixed those. Yeah, and we were never made aware of any alterations or fixes to those contracts whatsoever. I mean, they would have been unnecessary. I mean. Yeah. And also, I think, um, and I don't know if this is public information stuff, but I think there are some emails out there yeah. um, that I would suggest um, we get a hold of um, as board members in the media or whoever because there is there are conversations mm -hmm. so um, I don't want it to be construed that we're making these false accusations and we're making this stuff up to defame people and all that stuff there is critical information that leads us to this not just a speculation I think and um, and there have been conversations um, I think Mr. Hardy hasn't been in the district in how long I have been told that he hadn't been back until this week, Thursday, Friday, since the ADC made their announcement as yeah. far as working physically in the building. Now, I don't know if he's working from home or how else he was doing that, but. And um, then all of a sudden last week, we need, people need to meet all of a sudden, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. well I, I will say this. So in full disclosure, when, I, when legal called me about the issue that they were getting calls on and we were getting calls on, uh, I, I did make a call to Columbus and immediately Columbus set up a, a call with myself, Mr. Hardy and Paolo to ask, you know, to at least make them aware of the inquiries that we were getting and how they were going. And David assured me that over that period of time, he had not, didn't intend to, and he actually sent me an email stating that he had not renegotiated anything in the last six weeks. He actually think he went as far as two months. Um, but there is that chain of emails about mm -hmm. this MOU, and it's with the LAA's contract that we were talking about specifically. But those other ones that were altered against House Bill 70, those happened back in June, May, June, I believe. 
Um, well, there's what you didn't do, there, what you tried to do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But just for full disclosure, there is an email where he did say that he has not, and I take him at his word, that he has not. So I just think it's fair to have that on the record as well. Um, and that's an open email if anybody ever needed to see it. It's official. Um, and I'm comfortable that the ADC was made aware. I was made aware. Um, the state board was made aware that none of those have taken place, just for the record. And our, le and our legal team talking to our lawyer said that would be frowned upon by, um, they didn't think that would be a smart move on his part to do any type of contracts because on the uh, 3rd of January, Greg Ring then would look to basically vert back to what was normal and not <coughs> accept those contracts. If, so if we are still under the auspices of House Bill 70, which I believe we are because we'll still have a CEO and, and the power was is still with the CEO, mm -hmm. okay, as of January 3rd, and I know Greg Wing's not here to, to speak for it, would he not have the power to also nullify that contract? I, I not to play a lawyer on TV, but I would think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I would assume that if he has the powers of a CEO and he has said that, uh, yeah, I believe I mean, so. I mean, a I mean, lot of the unanswered uh, questions, Bill, is maybe he has the power, but if the district has been legally bound to a written contract with an individual or a person, uh, it's up to some other force to say if litigation. we have to fulfill yeah. the dollar amount. Maybe we can let them go, but there's still the dollar amount that has to be negotiated out or not. I don't have that answer. Yeah. I'm not a lawyer. I think that's where we kind of put that into their sphere. <laughs> and some lawyers are probably going to say absolutely, and some are going to say absolutely yeah. not. So we'll what let we're them talking about is cost and avoidance. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. And so. I mean, I'm glad that there's been um, whoever out there was, was seeing this and saying something, we're grateful that it came forward because now perhaps we can avoid something. Um, and then it's easier to avoid it than to reverse it. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about a lot of legal action, courts, attorneys, cost. Um, and ultimately, a lot of folks being very uncomfortable. I think um, even what, um, you know, we, we had this tour going on and trying to reinforce that, um, you know, there are no agendas out there. Yeah. Um, and if you have a job in this district, you have a job in this district. Um, but when you hear things like that, yeah. um, and, and e if nothing else, it creates more tension and turmoil among people, among, among employees, because if we heard about it, They've heard about it. Yeah. Um, and I think also, um, just to speak to, uh, for example, Mr. Jama, who's the president of the union. I mean, I had heard things like, you know, well, you get this, but, and that's none of which was true. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been um, unavailable, I think, and I think from, I had a conversation with him, and um, he spoke to their legal counsel. And by no means has he taken any action on behalf of the union. So we just want our people to know that there is no one trying to do backdoor deals um, but this is a preemptive thing. This is proactive to try and stop what hopefully is just a a rumor with legs on it, right? I mean, uh, okay. I saw what the email. I think is, yeah, you saw the email. <laughs> I saw so the I think, email. I think it's just another travesty he pointed out yeah. by House Bill 70. When it goes unchecked and there's no oversight, what could happen? Yeah. And I just think we have to prepare ourselves from any harm, any additional harm I wish I could that the state it. may have If I was allowed, I would read the email. <laughs> but I probably not allowed. <laughs> yeah, because I would look to legal. <laughs> the email indicated a real conversation and real intentionality. I mean, it wasn't. It was pretty clear. It's pretty clear in writing, mm -hmm. and it's pretty clear who wrote the email. Well, the, the the part I think is sad is that it's recommended that there is no MOU, and everybody has seen the MOU that everybody's talking about. They can't find. So that's pretty. That's pretty uh, upsetting. That. Yeah that we have a contract, we can't find the contract. We're saying now the contract doesn't exist, but we all know that it exists, so that's a tragedy. It exists. You've seen it. I'm, no, I'm just saying, I, yeah, it exists, it's out there. I, I mean, you. this stuff don't just disappear. So, so um, this is, to me, this is another excellent example of when a CEO is not transparent with the Board of Education. It causes all kinds, types of conflict all the way around. And we can't do our job because he's not doing his job. And there's too many gaps in between of a lack of communication of what's going on. Another result of House Bill 70. Yes. yes. Um, we were in a, um, in a meeting with um, ADC mem DC members, um, board members, uh, Mr. Ring, interim CEO, and, um, and administrators 
from all the schools. And um, Greg Ring made a, in his, in his statements, um, he, he talked about this House Bill 70 mm -hmm. and um, how f scary it is. For him going into his role as a CEO, he said, this thing is scary. He's never seen anything like it. Um, and the amount of authority and power and control that it gives one person without any accountability is frightening. And, um, and I think we've, we're yet another example of how bad, poorly written legislation compromises the integrity of a lot of individuals. So um, you hope they get that thing fixed quickly before we go into who knows what for us in other districts. So there's motion on the floor. I guess it's roll call. Is there, first of all, is there any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Williams. Yes. Ms. Nazario. Yes. Mr. Ballard. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Sturgill. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, second hearing of the public. Hello, Barbie Washington, Riverside Drive. Um, I ask you to please consider uh, holding the state accountable for any uh, fees, legal fees that we, we are paying uh, to look into what um, David Hardy is doing to our district. We already know that he gave almost a $20,000 raise to one of the chiefs. Um, uh, it's, what's happening here is just ridiculous and needs to be stopped. Um, there are um, numerous messages that we're receiving still almost daily from Jacinto and Johnny Wilson and the high school. Um, we are hoping, we know Mr. Ring can't come in here and just shake everything up, but we hope that something is going to happen soon. Uh, the leadership is just not what it needs to be in those three buildings um, especially. Uh, we don't even know some of the leaders' faces in the other buildings. Um, we are starting to go through the list of deans that have been hired, and so many of them have contracts, their temporary contracts are expired. Will those, um, will they be staying? Yeah, I can't answer that question at this point yeah. in time. I think he's got to really get his feet on the ground and figure out the, how he wants the district set up under his leadership. Just, um, I, I respect that answer. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are um, in trouble money-wise or we need to start paying attention where we're spending our dollars, those, many of the deans are constantly out of the buildings. Um, the buildings, many of the buildings are worse off this year compared to years prior and we have all of these extra people. Uh, we still have a huge issue with the scheduling at the high school. Um, I'm hoping that these are on the short list of Mr. Ring's concerns. I'm not sure what the list, the short list, long list, but here's what I do know, and it's just basic dollars and cents. I was told that we've, we're spending maybe $3 million more this year out than it's coming in. So that's basic math. And I think we're on a trajectory next year based on the forecast that we're spending $6 million more out than we've got coming in. So that's a $9 million deficit already, if that is accurate. And I think those are the things that are really drawing our attention to why, you know, the Hospital 70 is working about, worrying about our academics. We have to worry about academics and fiscal at the same time. And we have to make sure that we're doing the most we can to make sure that's solid. So, but, he, but that is on his radar. Um, last question, is the public records request, will he, um, release those? I know many of them are ready. So I've had a conversation with Mr. Ring about public records requests, and he believes in being transparent. And there was an example that we use, uh, even with the contract of this the separation agreement and the new contract with the new CEO. And when those records were requested of the AG, the people who requested them got them instantly, right away. And that's what we think public records requests should be like. Mm -hmm. So he believes in being transparent. I'm not certain what his time frame is going to be, but we've had that discussion, and we know that there's a list that are backdated that needs to be uh, addressed very quickly. 
Thank you. If I could add, yes. okay. Um, in our conversations with Mr. Ring, one thing is very sure, um, he is not coming in with any kind of a hit list. Um, he doesn't have a list of people or programs or anything that's targeted to be cut. Um, he's very clear he's gonna do a lot of listening, a lot of assessment um, to try and identify where we are um, in urgent jeopardy, um, what might be low-hanging fruit, um, but so no one should, should have in their mind that um, there's gonna be this person coming in swinging an ax all over the place. Um, I think he'll use a scalpel. I think he'll be very intentional um, and be very um, professional. I, I don't, again, and, and the reason I'm saying that because I know the angst amongst people is, Rrr. so yes. we're on a healing journey and I think we're gonna try and make sure everything that's done is done in order and done in a way that, um, that is respectful and our district is really traumatized. And even though a lot of people want heads on platters, um, we don't need to put ourselves under more trauma. So um, I, th I think the best thing is that we, from conversations with Mr. Ring, and I think everybody would agree, we trust um, that he has good discretion and judgment, um, and he's not gonna be pushed by any group to do anything that's not what he believes in the best interest of the district. Um, so, um, Hopefully that settles folks. We really want the water to calm down a little bit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Williams, I just want to commend you for saying that and putting that out so beautifully. That was well done and it was needed to be said aloud so that we can sort of clear up this fog that we are working in. And I want to commend Mr. Ballard for all of the work that he has done. It, it has been immense. And I think that it should be said. And thank you for doing all that with us and our legal department because they still have a long road to go. That's right. You do. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> a lot of reviewing to do, huh? A lot of reading. <laughs> now we're throwing it all over to you. All right. So from the, is there any updates from the ADC? What's going on? The new search, the time frame of the search? Have you guys, everything quiet? Uh, everything's been, well? been fairly quiet. Um, I think early 2020 there'll be some additional conversations I know Randall had um, kind of sent out a ha happy holidays Merry Christmas type of email and kind of looking forward to 2020 but there's nothing solid as far as the permanent search for the new uh, CEO slash superintendent um, and I think a lot of eyes are on Columbus seeing what's going to happen down there uh, might change parameters as far as timelines but um, at this point everything's been fairly quiet just kind of you know getting Greg acclimated into uh, his consultant role for the <coughs> time being, and then January 3rd as the, the CEO. Outstanding. Anything further? Good in order. So announcement of our next group. Yes, ma'am. No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so is there anything else from the public before we move forward? Please. Uh, Mr. Cawthon, um, we, um, I urge you and the ADC to um, not use a national search firm when looking for the next CEO. So I'm gonna stop you and let her put that question to me, but you heard what was said. <laughs> we have always said that we want the, the new permanent person to have a local flavor, and um, I think we talked about the... Finding leaders or some of those the, other possible ones, yeah. or, or mm -hmm. even the ESC even how, maybe. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. so it, there's, a lo there's some local choices yeah. that we do have. And we have to pay for that search firm? From my understanding, the state paid for the first search, but based on what I've been told, it is the district's responsibility to pay for the second search. I haven't identified that in House Bill 70 directly myself, but that is what I was told from someone at the ODE. But we like that. Maybe. If, if we're involved, if we're okay. paying for it, then I think we get to exercise voice in who it is. I think the new relationship of the ADC and the local board will give us that voice. I'm not sure if House Bill 70 does. I think they see some of the flaws of 70, mm -hmm. and they're trying to rectify some of those and understanding that without the local voice, without a local board, without the people's voice being heard, none of this would ever work. This is working better than mm -hmm. it ever has. It's still 98% flawed, mm -hmm. but they know it would be a train wreck for them to try to do it without it. Yeah. <clears throat> 
a more severe train wreck because it's still a train wreck. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we need to sort of make that known too. Like this is better that the ADC and the board is working together, but we are still like our goal is to um, regain all again. of our yeah, yeah all of and, our and control we've made back. That, the ADC has made that abundantly clear to the powers that be that like <laughs> we've all joked this is the only job we want to get fired from <laughs> because if we get fired from being like if I'm not sitting up here with you guys, mm -hmm. that means House Bill 70 has gone away that local control is returned. So as much as I love all of this, it would be okay if I wasn't sitting up here a few months from now. And I think every other ADC member would agree with that. You can always attend the meeting. Uh, that's true. We're gonna miss you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> we hope it's so what, what we are saying is that we want more community input Completely. all the way around. Yes, 100%. Excellent, and, and we that. should keep pushing that each time we have so yes that and happens. we will continue and i know we can right. count on you to do uh, that i'll do the very best i can right. yes ma'am <laughs> um hearing nothing else from the public the next meeting will be scheduled for five o'clock here in this room on january the 13th the organizational meeting. it would be our organizational meeting for the start of the year hopefully mr ring will be here with us at that time i believe he will um and yeah we'll have the whole band back together then <laughs> Uh, so, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Roll call. Okay, it was Ms. Nazario? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Ballard? Yes. Mr. Sturgill? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Adjourn. Merry Christmas, motion everyone. Adjourn. Merry Christmas, yes. everyone. Merry Thank Christmas. you all for coming out. <laughs> this has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV20, WLCS.